Hello everyone, welcome back to my Module 2 Special Ed Presentation, Part 2. Uh, students with special needs need support to reach their potential. And that's what the IEP process does. The ideal is that each special needs child will achieve to the maximum extent, extent possible in a regular education setting. This, this does not mean we will hold students' hands and protect them from academic rigor. It means that we will level the playing field for them, making it more comfortable and suitable uh, to their special needs. These are the IEP requirements as stated in the reauthorization of IDEA. They are also listed in Chapter 1 of Cohen and Spencer, 2015, which you can find in Module 2. This might even be a quiz question, <laughs> so be forewarned. <laughs> Um, I also have a link here to the New York City IEP website where you can find uh, where you and your parents, I think it's mostly geared for parents, but you can find important information, um, things to consider, eligibility, talking to teachers, care providers, response to intervention, uh, what's next, and 504 accommodations, which uh, we won't get into in this, but you should have gotten into it in your special ed, introduction to special ed class. Um, in the Waterman article, uh, which I used to use, used, used to be mandatory reading, uh, mandated, uh, it's now it's located in ancillary materials and it's, uh, it's probably 20 years old, but a lot of it is still relevant. Uh, and later in the Popham text, our textbook, you'll find there's a significant difference between assessment and testing. Although I'm reading a book right now by uh, Dylan William. Um, it's a book club for the Turo faculty. Um, and he says he uses those terms interchangeably and I disagree with that um, because testing um, is a one-shot deal. An assessment and making inferences uh, about assessments is a process um, and the IEP is one kind of that process. Uh, response to intervention is another kind of process where um, we use assessment and, and tests are part of that. Um, so as you can see from this slide, testing is usually a one-shot deal while assessment is a process done over time and uh, to me that's a big difference. Um, every child has a right to a non-discriminatory evaluation and you'll see as we progress through the course and talk about uh, unbiased assessments and fairness that, that it isn't easy. Um, just having a translator read a standardized test to a student changes the reliability of, of the assessment. So following this dictum is not always easy um, and I wouldn't recommend um, using a translated test unless it's been, unless that translated test has been validated um, and, and assessed for reliability uh, on its own. So just taking a test that is valid and, and having a translator read it is not going to work. <laughs> um, again, we need to use multiple assessments in determining a student's interests and achievement levels. For a full evaluation, which is mandatory in order to classify a student, um, we must assess all areas. This often seems tedious, but we think we, uh, when we think we know what's wrong with a student, oh, we don't have to do that. I know he's got emotional problems, <laughs> but it's the law and rightfully so. We don't know. <laughs> I know uh, my daughter, when she was struggling in the uh, first grade, um, she had uh, her eyes were bad and they still are bad, but we didn't know that until um, uh, she was assessed in uh, the first grade. So that's why we assess all areas. Um, many times the root cause of a student's problem may not be what seems obvious. IDEA 2004 also gave educators the option of not using the IQ achievement discrepancy model for classifying students as learning disabled. And we're going to talk more about that and learn more about that in the next module. Um, these are more requirements for assessments that are used are to be used to classify students. I do not recommend giving a student a translated test, as I said before, 
unless it's been validated in that language. Um, in my Blackbird, Blackbird, um, <laughs> 4 and 20, <laughs> in my Blackboard version of this course, I, I used to have a folder, well, I, I still do, <laughs> if you want to go back and look at those. Um, I posted a folder with brief summaries of 20 or 30 standardized tests um, that you might encounter in a regular classroom or, or as a special education teacher. I did not include it in this uh, Canvas version um, because it was too lengthy. Um, they don't have folders in uh, Canvas. Uh, and if you are going to use a test in your classroom as a regular ed teacher or special ed teacher, your district will have that test. And if you can give it, you will also be able to have a manual that, that you will look at before that test. So, you know, teaching you about a thousand tests would be nonsensical and a waste of time uh, because most of them you may, you may not read, you ever use. And if you do need to use one, you, you would go to your school psychologist and say, hey, I want to I wanna test a phonetic, I want to do a phonetic test on this student uh, or whatever. And, and then they would, if, if, you're, if you don't have to be certified to give it, like I was certified to give the WISC, uh, so, and I had to go through a process to do that, but most of the tests you will give, you do not have to be certified, and there's a manual um, that you will um, use to uh, uh, be able to give that test to your students. Um, so that's it for this presentation. In my third video, I will talk more about IDEA.